Hey, this is Gary with Jolly Dolly, and I'm going to show you how to upgrade the sealed lead acid batteries in your Power Plus chain drive dolly to this lithium battery pack. So here is the lithium battery, and this is the installation kit that we send with it. It's got all the pre-crimped wiring harnesses and mounting hardware that you need for a clean installation with no wire splicing. Plus, it's got a new lithium-friendly charger. This is the quick connect that connects the battery to the dolly, making future battery swaps a lot easier. However, I want to advise that you don't connect that to the battery until you've got it installed, because if you do, these two ends, if they knock together, it'll short the battery out and could cause a major problem. The first step is to lay the dolly on its belly and remove the rear cover. We have it on a table here, but you can do this just as easily on the ground. Before you take anything apart, the first thing you want to do is remove the fuse. If you open up this cover, your fuse is going to be right here. This is what's called a maxi fuse. Some models may have a standard ATC automotive fuse. Uh, if it won't come out, just use some pliers to pull it out. We want to loosen and remove all of the battery terminal screws. And this is either going to be 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter. So you need a, a ratchet and a socket. Once you've removed the batteries, you should have these two wires also removed. They're not going to be used in the upgrade, so you can throw those away. Once all the battery wires have been removed, we want to remove the battery tie down. This access hole is how you get to the bolt. Now on this one, all this has shifted over and you can't get to it from the access hole. So what we're going to do is use a wrench to come in here and start to loosen this until it's loose enough where we can push everything back over and access the bolt through the hole. Just start pulling batteries out. From the back, and then you'll be able to get better access to complete removing the bolt. Next, we're going to change out the charge port with the new one included in your kit to simplify the connection to the new battery. We're going to loosen these screws, but you've got to hold the nut that's back behind them and you can't see. Um, you're going to use needle nose pliers for that. So I'm holding the nut and turning the screw. Uh, some of these are lock nuts so it'll be difficult to remove the screw. You'll have tension on it the whole way. Um, again, turning with the screwdriver but making sure the nut is held in place behind it with needle nose pliers. Once you've got them out, pull this out and just pull out the wire with it. Working from the outside of the dolly, we're going to route the wires for the charge port into the hole. And then we're going to put the charge port in its hole. Being careful, this, this spring right here often gets caught up and we'll need to wiggle this around to get it fully seated. And once you do, just make sure this trap door is working properly. Now, you're going to want to use the screws that came with your new charge port. These are three millimeter screws and they go in a lot easier uh, than the number six screws that might have been in there before. Uh, and these flange nuts, if you can see those, uh, these will lock into place on the back side. So once you get them hand tight, you should be able to hold them with just a finger instead of pliers and tighten them. There's two wires that we're going to be dealing with uh, when connecting the new battery to the dolly. And it's this uh, black one and this red one. And you can tell 
they're the right wires because they each have two wires going to the ring terminals. Uh, so we want to check these ring terminals. If necessary, use some sandpaper if they have any corrosion on them. You want to make sure they're nice and clean metal uh, before proceeding. Also, when doing a battery swap, you should follow these two wires back to their source um, and just make sure that everything's in good condition. On this particular dolly, this is one of those battery wires. And as you can see, this connector has arced. This whole thing is melted. This needs to be changed out. This is not safe like this at all. Okay, now it's time to take our positive and negative wires and hook them up to this wiring harness that came with your kit. Make sure this is not connected to the battery while you're installing it. So before we hook the wires and the dolly up to our wiring harness, we want to take our heat shrink tubing that looks like this and put it onto the positive and negative wires that go to the dolly. These are the wires with two wires crimped into a single terminal. So we just stick them through like that and make sure that's on there before we proceed. Okay, so we want to locate our positive wire for the dolly. It's the one with two red wires going to a single ring terminal. We're going to hook that to the positive wire, which is the red wire of our wiring harness. And we're going to do that using this hardware. Okay, for each one, you should have a bolt, an acorn nut, two flat washers, and a lock washer. So we're going to take our uh, bolt, go through the lock washer first. That's the one with the split in it. Then we're going to go through a flat washer. Okay. Then we want to go through the dolly ring terminal and then through the wiring harness ring terminal. And then on the other side, we're going to put another flat washer. And then we're going to put our acorn nut. And then we're going to tighten this down. It's important that all of these washers are present because what can happen if you're short on washers, uh, the bolt will bottom out in the acorn nut before you got it tight enough. So this is what it should look like. Okay, we want the same thing for our negative or black wire. We're going to take a bolt, go through the split lock washer, through one of the flat washers. And then we go through the dolly ring terminal, the negative, and then through our wiring harness. And then we flip over and put on one more flat washer and then the acorn nut. We're going to hand tighten that. Now we should have both positive and negative. should be black to black and red to red. Okay, now we're going to tighten these. We're going to use a wrench, 7 sixteenths. We're going to put the wrench on the acorn nut, and then we'll put our ratchet and socket on the bolt. And we want this super tight, as tight as you can get it. And it doesn't matter that the wrench goes on which one, just as long as you get them tight. And you also want to make sure that the wires are lined up like this. You don't want them in an L shape. You want them straight. And I can't stress enough, those need to be super tight. And then hopefully you remember to put your heat shrink tubing in place before you tighten this. This is going to go over like this. And you want to make sure this is centered so that the connection is right in the center of here. And you do the same thing for your negative. Then you're going to heat shrink this. An alternative to heat shrink is to use uh, electrical tape. That's just as good, but uh, the heat shrink is maybe a little bit better. Once you make sure that the, the bolt and the connection point is centered in this heat shrink tubing, you can start shrinking it. I'm using a heat gun here. Um, if you don't have a heat gun, should be able to use a lighter. Just watch what you're doing. Make sure these heat guns get really hot. So you don't want to be melting something behind it that you don't want to melt.
Now the heat shrink is not going to shrink far enough to actually be flush with the wire, uh, but it will shrink enough to where this is not going to move away from here. It's not going to slide off of the wires, uh, and you can you can seal it at the ends of the heat shrink just by using some electrical tape. And you may have to turn this also to heat up the back side. It takes quite a bit of heat, believe it or not, to uh, shrink these. So this is what you should end up with. Here's your connector. Um, you have the fuse that we, we already installed for you. And then here's your connection points that you just made. And then here's the dolly wiring. You have red and you have black and you make sure you have red to red and black to black. Okay, next we're gonna install these eye bolts into the bolt holes where the tie down bolts used to go. The two long bolts that you removed. Uh, and these don't need to be super tight just thread it at least halfway down there. They can't turn once you're done because uh, they'll have a zip tie holding them on. Okay, so this is the top of the dolly. This one might be a little bit difficult because it's going to be really close to this panel right here. Um, if for some reason it's too close, you can always loosen the screws on this panel and pull it out just far enough to get this threaded in. Okay, now we can go ahead and put our battery pack in place. Uh, we're going to slide it in here, making sure it's right side up. Make sure there's nothing underneath it. Make sure you have your connection wire and you should have two charger wires right here. And we can go ahead and connect these uh, to the charge port. We're going to go red to red, black to black. Um, on these connectors, if they don't want to go in, you just turn them around. Now, sometimes they won't go in. You just flip them over and they'll go right in. Make sure these are fully seated. Now we can go ahead and test the dolly. So we're going to put this connection together, press it all the way in, um, check and make sure that your fuse is in here. It should be pre installed, 70 amp fuse. Now you can turn the dolly on and make sure it works. You want to turn the dolly on, listen for the click. Change gears and listen for the click, then give it some throttle to make sure it's working. Okay, so now we're going to do some wire management and just ignore all this mess. It's a heap of wires, but we're not concerned about that. Here, all these wires are tied down here. We want to take our battery wires. It's two reds and two blacks, and we just want to pull all the slack from here to here. Make sure there's no extra slack, and we're going to run a zip tie through our eye bolt that we installed. And then we're going to cinch this down just like that. And then we'll come in and trim off the excess. Next, we're going to take our big 36 inch zip tie and starting at the bottom, we're going to thread this through this eye bolt. So then we're going to take the zip tie and thread it through the top eye bolt. Kind of tricky working in a tight space here. It helps if you have a tool, a pick tool like this, you can help you uh, fish it through. So after this giant zip tie is threaded through both eye bolts, we can go ahead and put it back through itself. Oops, that's backwards. Make sure you got it right so it'll lock into place. We don't want to tighten this down all the way just yet. Make sure all your wires are out of the way and just leave it a little bit loose so we can finish our wire management. Now at this point you want to take all your extra wire uh, and just kind of make a bundle. Um, <clears throat> bundle it all together and you're going to take a zip tie and go under the zip tie that holds the battery down 
and then you're going to zip tie this in place. I would recommend you use two. Put another one right here. Just make sure that all this excess wire is fastened so that it's not going to move around. You don't want it getting stuck, especially in the chain or on the axle. It can get wrapped around and cause a nightmare. Uh, so once that's secure, you can continue to tighten this hold down zip tie on the battery and just make sure that's as tight as you can get it. Once everything's tight, you can take some snips, snip off all the excess on your zip ties. Now you have a nice clean installation. Now that we're done, we want to take one final look at everything. We want to make sure there's no loose wires. We want to make sure the battery's secured. Make sure you haven't left any washers or screws anywhere down in here that could get caught in the chain. Um, and once you're sure everything is good, put your cover back on and your dolly's ready to go. You'll need to reprogram your battery indicator to make sure that it displays properly with the new batteries. Just make sure you're reprogramming the correct indicator, the one for the drive batteries and not the one for the winch batteries. Here's how to program a battery indicator for 36 volt lithium. Hold down the top button until a number pops up, then release and single press top button until you get to number one. Single press bottom button, a letter pops up, single press top button till you get to F. Single press bottom button until a number pops up and then single press top button until you get to 12 and then hold down bottom button when you're at F12. Now you can cycle the power and then when you power back up it should say F12. Done. So you can no longer use this factory charger to charge your battery. It may work, but it's never going to fully charge the battery, and um, it's just not recommended. This is the, the charger that came with your battery pack, and we've given you an adapter in the kit so that it plugs straight into this charge port. And you want to plug it up and make sure that you get the red lights indicating that it's charging. Um, before you put everything back together, just make sure that the battery does charge. Once it turns back to green, that means fully charged. The kit comes with a sticker that you can peel off and stick next to the charge port, and this will remind you of the correct charger to use. We hope you found this video helpful. For more information, visit thejollydolly.com support.